All right, here we go. My one-tenth scale Traxxas Summit. This truck has had so many lids on it. Currently, it is my fugitive recovery agent vehicle. Uh, <laughs> over the years, the people that have been watching the show have seen it take on many personalities. This is the Summit that did the floating tires. Uh, this is the Summit that did the, the, the motor blow with the uh, rat rod body from pit dog hydro lots of cool videos and I'll tell you it's one of those trucks that just keeps on giving uh, it does have a two-stage transmission in it for those that are new to the show and don't know the Traxxas Summit uh, it does have locking and unlocking differentials both of these things can be done from the radio uh, and you know I've done enough custom uh, stuff to this truck and uh, bolt-on upgrades over the years that we really have built a machine that is quite fun now, I did have old 700 series motors on this truck. Uh, I did blow one of them just because they were getting old and the abuse that we put these vehicles through. And I did upgrade to the DeWalt 820s, but I haven't upgraded the ESC. Now, I don't need to upgrade the ESC, but I certainly need to add an external uh, BEC, which is like a power regulator. It, it, it basically helps... Uh, override the BEC in the ESC, which is kind of like the heart. This is where it pumps energy from the battery into the into the motor, right? Uh, so the BEC will do that. It'll make sure these are getting all the power it needs. Plus the servos that are in here are upgraded uh, Savox waterproof servos. Plus there's these three Traxxas servos, these mini servos. So all of these need power. Plus these giant motors are now asking for even more power. And of course, the BEC on a stock ESC is not really going to be able to support all of that. In fact, if I ran this truck right now, this would probably run for about mm, two minutes and then just overheat and shut down. An external BEC will help this. So I'm going to be doing that in the future. That's, you know, th this is a labor of love. It's an ongoing project for me, like a lot of my projects are. I know you guys are interested. These tires, if you're new to the show, are um, mudslinger tires. They are aluminum beadlocks on the inside, the Huntsman there. Also, these MIP drive shafts I have, the drive shafts, the axles, are steel. And I like MIPs. They've, they've always done me well. They have a tendency to have the grub screws pop out, and they also can cause a bit of rust, you know? But today, as you guys can see by the title and video description, I'm going to be focusing on the implementation and installation of the new leading edge machining V4 axle set. So I thought, eh, might as well turn on the camera, give you guys a bit of a, a show and see how these right here, hand uh, built for me, these are aluminum and steel, very strong, very lightweight. I look forward to putting them to the test and uh, after all the reviews I've read on them and, and Facebook posts and all that stuff, people really do like them. So I'm looking forward to popping them in and seeing how they look. So I'll remove these, which are in there quite tight because I did use Loctite, but the Loctite I used was blue, so I'd be able to remove it if some pressure was applied. Having these go in water and moving at high rotation really do uh, get these screws to unturn themselves. And it's always a bummer when you look down to one of your rims and you see one of your screws is missing. So I do add a very small amount of Loctite. Uh, somebody else said a cheap Loctite alternative, if you've got some laying around or your uh, wife's got something, is uh, some nail polish, eh? Put some nail polish on the end of the screws, zip it in there, and it works just like Loctite and you can always get it out. All right, so the back mounting hub for that rim is quite strong and sturdy, made of aluminum. I'm gonna take some channel locks on a wide setting and just kind of grab it so it doesn't move around. This inside washer there, it's, you know, it's a star pattern, it's kind of funny. Can't get in there with a socket or anything. So I'm actually gonna be using uh, some curved needle nose pliers. I'm just gonna start undoing that washer. Once it's backed up far enough, I can just use my fingers. And then release and just slide it off. Piece of cake. That's where the hex adapter is on the back. 
that's how it fits onto the star. And oh, lots of weeds from a hungry axle. <laughs> all right, next uh, we have a small grub screw that goes all the way through. Not difficult to remove at all. Well, mine hasn't been. There we are. But we need to remove this just so we can access the inside MIP drive shaft. Now, I did not put any grease on the inside of this when I started, which I should have because being steel drive shafts, uh, it starts to rust a little bit on the bearing. Now these bearings, uh, that one's on its way out. I could probably change it. I'll do it when it does blow out though. It's not too bad. I will clean it with a bit of penetrating oil. Here is a product from Cal RC. They call it utter butter. <laughs> Waterproof grease from calrc.com. I use this now instead of marine grease. It holds up great. I have good experiences with it. So what I'm gonna do is just use my cloth, add a glob of grease here. Just gonna stick it on the inside of this uh, spindle. And the reason why I'm doing this, of course, is when water and mud gets in there, it tries to work itself into the bearing. Well, if you've got a, 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 a barrier there, like a waterproof grease, it certainly does help. I'll push that through to the other bearing as soon as I get the LEM axle shaft in there. So next part to, uh, well, back up the camera, number one. Next part, I'm going to be removing this small piece of the drive shaft here off of the differential. Uh, this is the second piece of the MIP drive shaft, and it only has two small grub screws. So not a big deal. You just have to make sure that it's turned around, that you can access the grub screw. And there is one on the other side if you used both. There it is. Come on, get down there. There we are. Backing it out and removing the second piece. So when I'm putting the pieces of the MIP drive shaft back together, I'll put this in my wife's truck, um, I'm actually putting the grub screws back into place because so many times over the years, uh, I'm like, oh, I'll just put them in a screw kit and then you never find them again. <laughs> so if you keep them all assembled and together, you'll always be able to use it in the future. <laughs> Tech tip. <laughs> And here it is, beautiful, ba -bow. ready to install. So I'm gonna take this grub screw out of the top, pretty straightforward, line up the hole that I just had on the differential with the hole on the side, just kind of fit the collar over the output shaft on the differential. Here we go. Here is the long set screw that's gonna be going into the hole. You just line it up. It can be a challenge to get it all lined up, but if you're patient and use your eyeballs, you can certainly do it. I'm gonna give it a gentle tap. You can see it kind of drove it right into where it needs to sit. And then just a couple of turns and it already comes with that blue Loctite on it, which is great because this will help prevent it from backing out. And here's another suggestion. Just like on the MIPs, when I should have gone ahead and put some lubricant on the end, because if water gets in there, you don't want the bearing to rust right to it. I doubt that will happen here. Just a quick little blob of grease on the end, even though I've already put it into the spindle, making sure that it's not gonna stick in the future. Here we are. Just gonna start them off, not gonna screw them in super tight yet until I get both of them into their respective arms. Love it. Still lining up, making sure everything can move properly. Greasy fingers, I could be doing this with rubber gloves, my friends. Absolutely, the dexterity is a little bit more challenging for me, but if you'd like to use rubber gloves, you can. I'll be washing my hands directly after, though. Ta-da! Da, 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 da. 
Okay, still loose on the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten that up. Not too tight. And this one as well. You're still, you're not, you don't want to have them in all the way because you still want to have the ability to flex the arm up and down without everything binding. Let's put this hex adapter back. Make sure it's lined up with the hole properly. Tighten this little guy up. Because we're almost done this one. Ta-da, da-da-da-da. There we go. And then the hex adapter plate for the big 40 series rim. The washer. Now this is where it's a bit of a bugger because if you don't tighten this washer up enough, uh, what will happen is it will start to back off and then you'll get kind of a wobble in your wheel. So you want to make sure to grab it, tighten it up, and uh, uh, you know give it a little bit of torque if you can. Save you some work in the future. <sighs> there we go. And then the tire. I'm going in a star pattern. So farthest opposite point of the last one I screwed in. Why would I do that? A lot of folks that are experienced already know why, but what I'm doing is I'm adding equal pressure on all sides. And you get a nice tight marriage between the rim and the hex plate. Okay, so I'm gonna hand tighten these only because I do not want to over tighten and strip. Stripping the hex screws on things like this is not a pretty game. So then you gotta cut them out and that's no fun with beautiful rims. Beautiful. There we go, star pattern on there nice and tight. I'm happy with that. Now, let's do a little music montage because now that we've installed one, we can install the others at a faster pace. That wasn't too bad. I cannot tell a lie. Yes, you just saw a music montage, but what you really saw were the three that I did first <laughs> off camera. And of course I did the last one for you guys on camera, just so I had an idea of the tutorial and not to mess it up. Hence why my hands were already dirty. Uh, <laughs> let's have an up close look at this because they look pretty darn awesome. I'm happy with the way they look so far. There they are. Blue boots and brushed aluminum. Very nice, they look very sharp. Fairly light, you know, in my opinion, when I was holding on to them. One, two, three, 
four leading edge machining V4 upgraded axles for my Traxxas Summit. Whew, another upgrade in the books. I gotta tell you, I have high expectations out of these uh, drive shafts. And the reason why is taking those MIPs out, I know they're strong. And I wanna find out if these are gonna be able to handle dual DeWalts. I, I, I'm not saying that normal drive shafts can handle this. So if these can handle these DeWalt high torque motors, we're gonna have a winner. Uh, lots, like now that you've seen the gold uh, mounting plate for these rims, plus the rim and the tire, like these are heavy, right? Super heavy. So have all four of these have that weight, man, the amount of strain on the drivetrain is going to be enormous. So big, big hopes. We'll see how it goes. I also have another uh, piece from LEM that I'm going to be putting in. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it on video only because I've never done it before. Uh, and it's to put the piece in the transmission to remove the slop. Now, what do I mean by that? Check it out. I'll move the tire forward and backward and, and keep your eye on the pinion and spur. Look at that. That's how much movement this particular Traxxas Summit has because the transmission is allowing it to roll. Now, for most folks, this wouldn't be an issue, right? You're just out having a good time with your truck, not a big deal. Remember, it has a two-stage transmission. So for rock crawling, things that I would do on larger boulder-sized rocks, if you're having any kind of competition where you're trying to do uh, uh, very precise movements or trying to position your truck, if you're letting off the throttle for a moment and it's actually rolling far, that can actually cause your truck to be getting out of position or to actually roll down the hill or off the rocks or, or whatever, right? I know, <laughs> I just totally nerded out. I heard it, <laughs> but I love this hobby. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I don't know if I'll do a tutorial on that. If you want me to muddle through it on camera and you can kind of learn as I'm learning, then post up in the video comments section below and uh, then I'll be able to a C, which majority wins. Uh, the other thing is I want to say uh, thanks a lot for tuning in today. If you guys are working on your RCs when you're watching RC Adventures, post up down below what RC you have. I'd love, I'd love to know. You guys have been seeing my RCs for such a long time. Uh, let me know what you have. Anyway, guys, see you later. Go outside, have some fun with RC, and we'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. Bye.